All right, Tularinos, I am back at the hardware store uh, to look more closely at uh, the most unusual or most interesting tools that were on the wall. So I'll try to go through them as quickly as I can. And they've got one of these cool wizard adjustable wrenches. It's a uh, patented December 13th, 1904, the Richards Manufacturing Company, Aurora, Illinois. Other patents pending. So, pretty nice one. Good shape. There is this beautiful Lufkin rule. It's still operational. And look what it says. Instantaneous. <laughs> Trademark, instantaneous. Interesting. Um, the Lufkin Rule Company, patent applied for. So, pretty neat. On this side it says, The Challenge, Accuracy Guaranteed. Here's an interesting little <clears throat> hammer type tool. It's got wood scales, like a perfect handle. Uh, uh, prying end here, but it looks like it's been bent because the wood is separating there. I don't know what would have been on this end. It looks like it's busted off. And I don't see any marks on it. So, not sure where that originated, but it's interesting. Here's one of these uh, hatchet hammer claw hammer, nail puller type tools, has a logo here, I'm not sure I can read that, hopefully it'll be legible on a bigger screen, and then it says something here, looks like it's upside down, number 99, so pretty cool. And then there's another one, but this one's a little more uh, unusual. It almost looks homemade or certainly more handmade with the seam through the hammerhead there. And the scales on the handle are pretty rough. It's been hammered on, uh, unfortunately. But look at what it says. There we go. Iroquois. Patented October 8th. 1914. So, pretty cool. Very unusual. Next item is a brace. And, you know, normally we don't think uh, these things are too special, but this one has this very unusual looking chuck. And, uh, the brand is not Stanley or Victorious or Miller's Falls. It's a Pexto. It says something there. I guess it says Samson. Pexto Samson. And look at the end of the chuck. It's really strange looking. Not sure how this how this works, but um I don't know. Anybody seen a chuck like that? Anybody know what kind of bit that would hold? Or all right, next up is this little set of tools. All right, it's a big set of little tools. <laughs> um, I don't know what all these things were for. Let's see if the camera can help identify anything. See some writing on there. Fitz Bosch. Uh, it says they fit different things. This one says Fitz Remy. And you get a tiny little screwdriver here. Kind of reminds me of the ones that go into the nesting screwdrivers, but it doesn't have any threads on it anywhere. 
This one says Fitz Presto. So I don't know, it's like uh, for working on ignition points or something. Fitz Basco or Fitz Rasco. Fitz Remy. So yeah, I think these are um, some kind of ignition tools or something. All right. That's interesting. Next up, it's one of these cool auto adjusting wrenches. It has uh, fine teeth on the inside, and uh, it's just uh, it's a smooth working, very nice. It says Platina number one zero zero eight. Drop forge steel, made in Germany. So, very nice. Here we got a really nice egg beater uh, drill. It's um, Goodell Pratt, Greenfield, Massachusetts. Patent date of. March 31st, 1896. That's cool. The chuck on it is a Jacobs chuck. It's got the, the two-speed system, and it's got a opening a handle to store bits. Just has one drill bit in there right now. But uh, that's one of the really nice ones. I like that. Here we have a... Oh, I'm blanking on what this is called. It cuts a dowel on the end of a piece of furniture for like making chair legs or wagon wheels and things like that. And it has a adjustable height a set stop there. And then you could switch it to a different size and then the cutter is adjustable and sharpenable. And let me see here. It says something Stearns and Co. Syracuse, New York. So, pretty nice one. It's in good shape. Here's another item. Uh, I don't know what this is. Maybe some of you guys could help me out with that. It's got a pointy end here. Maybe a thing to hold a handle in here. And it says patent February 11th, 1919. So hopefully I can find the patent. And if I do, I will show you. Here's another unusual one. Um, you know, it's a blade handle. And then this is the blade that's in it. And here it says uh, TJ Pope. And it's so well in there, it's hard to imagine somebody carved that into cast iron. So I'm wondering if that was the brand or something, because it seems too well in there. Uh, some sort of numbers here. Upside down. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody has any idea what this is, or, or uh, what era it's from, or whatever? Let me know in the comments, okay? And this is just a tool, I'm not sure, uh, there was a sign on it that said SCORP? Question mark. It's kind of sharpened on both faces here. And it's just a loop on a handle. So I'm not sure what a SCORP is for. If anybody knows, let me know. And here we have a very tiny little pipe, pipe wrench. It's got the wooden handle. Uh, let's see if the camera will help us identify it. Because my eyes are mm, my eyes are not good enough to tell me what that says anymore. Still some. There we go. Six. Is it a six inch? It is a six inch. So a tiny little six inch wood handled pipe wrench. Still some. Pretty cool. And here we have two homemade pliers of some sort. 
these ones the handles come almost all the way together and it pinches at the tip and this one the handles still have some room to close and it is you know a long jaw action here and it closes all the way so no markings on them they definitely uh, appear to be homemade or shop made so pretty neat next item up is this uh, let's see it says malleable iron IXL chain plier patented and the inside it says OP Shriver Company Cincinnati Ohio Uh, if that is a patent number, hopefully the patent will tell us. And here we have a more or less typical, you know, wood plane. But it's a brand I hadn't heard of before. Fulton. It says value leader. So maybe it was kind of a cheaper one. I don't see any other markings anywhere else on it. But it seems pretty well made. So, I don't know. Just because it's a brand I hadn't heard of before. And look at this. Can you guys see inside there? It looks like it's made of brass. And it's connected with electrical wires. In very sad shape. But I am told these are heated steering wheel grips for like a Model T or other old truck or something. That leather strap here. So how about that? Heated steering wheel grips. And I thought heating, heated steering wheels were a relatively new idea. And the next item up is this large Bemis and Call uh, wrench. And it's a number two. It's massive. It's in great condition, the scales are in fine shape, and it is every bit of 20 inches long. Uh, if you close the jaw down, it would be about 20 inches long. So, how about that? Feels like it weighs every bit of uh, 10 pounds. Next up is a hedge trimmer. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't think I'll be using that hedge trimmer, but uh, it's pretty neat. It says Cyclone, and uh, you know, you wouldn't want to get your fingers in there. This is, uh, let's see, Chandler Avermass. So it must be the place it's made. It says patented, but no number or date. So it's the same thing there. So interesting. The Cyclone Hedge Trimmer. Next up is this very cool uh, wood plane that is rounded for planing out uh, wooden spouting, you know, for gutters. So, how about that? Pretty neat. Next up is the Midget Cedar. Patent December 8th, 1914. And look, when it was for sale, it was only $3.95. This is new old stock. It has uh, an adjuster here to uh, position farther up these, which makes the hole larger, I think, so that it can handle larger seeds. Little seeds are here, and as it goes up the steps, it makes it bigger, so it can do peas and beans. And uh, it looks like it's got its own little 
plow and uh, furrow uh, device so that you'd um, put a handle on here or something and you could push it through soft dirt on your garden and the wheel would roll and it would deploy seeds, it would plant seeds. On the back side here it says manufactured by the American Fork and Hoe Company. I gotta turn to try to read the rest. Montrose, Iowa. So, made in Iowa. Pretty neat. New old stock. I wonder how long those were for sale and when they stopped making them. Next item. I don't know what this is. Hopefully somebody can tell me. It's electric. Has a spot here to hold the plug in the handle. And so I'm assuming it has a heating element that runs around the perimeter. And uh, uh, my guess is that it's for cutting up blocks of compressed snow to build an igloo or something. Uh, I don't know. I, I got nothing else. Anybody else? know what this is. I don't see any markings on it. Uh, so it is 20 inches long. So kind of a big item. Next up is another hedge trimmer. It is 20 inches wide and I cannot find any markings on it. There's nothing wherever you might expect to find markings. But uh, it has an interesting action. Yeah. Yeah, actuate the handles like this. So I think I would like this one better than the Cyclone. <laughs> but uh, still, awful lot of work. And it opens so big, like it could... You could get something too big in there to cut for sure. So, another interesting item. And last but not least... A draw knife. An adjustable draw knife. See how the ends can unscrew and it has uh, teeth, so you can change the position of the handles. Let's see if we can find anything written. Aha! There's something written there. Hang on. Alright, I'm not sure if that's going to be able to come out all right, but it says the James Swan Co. And it looks like a 10. So, pretty cool, huh? And it too is about 18 inches long, and the blade is 10. blade has a curve in this direction and it is flat in that direction. So, cool, huh? Oh, no, wait. I forgot. One more item. There's this large brass bucket into which you would deposit something that you're weighing, I believe. And attaches to this scale with the hook hanging here and then you could adjust it says Winchester bushel so I guess this is uh, a standard weight a standard way of measuring something agricultural probably and look what it says here AS Garmin and Sons milling specialties Akron, Ohio. And this whole thing is all brass. Pretty cool. Check out this huge homemade wood plane. Put the yardstick up there. About 26 inches. Looks like they reused the wood handle from a, a saw as the main back handle, which is pretty clever, if that's what they did. And, uh, Got a wooden wedge and your uh, blade. Looks really well made. Looks like you could still use this today. 
so pretty cool. A well-made tool will outlive us all. Has anyone ever seen something like this? It has a bunch of numbers on it. It kind of reminds me of the Doyle log scale on a folding rule. But the way this is set up definitely is intended to be sat on a floor or something. And then it has this thick end for, you know, holding it or picking it up by. So it doesn't slip out of your hand. And it says uh, Cleveland Rule Company, Cleveland, Ohio. Hmm. No idea what that's for. You guys know what you're looking at, so I'm not going to try to describe everything we're seeing. Just try to take it easy. Hmm. You see the tin roof? Or the tin ceiling and the belts the belts completely circles this part of the building they must have a long pull to get a belt down <laughs> uh, and look at these paint mixers red devil I wonder what year these are from. Probably from the 60s, I would guess. Turn the timer want to go on, you can turn it on if you want to see it in action. Uh, I'll scare you, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> never touch them. They just run every day. Really? Never have had. They leak a little oil, kind of like an old Harley, you know.